We are gathered here to fill you with fear and give you a treat for your ears as we invade your mind with our scary rhymes and some tales that can be gory. As you bear witness and sit here and listen to our poetic horror stories. Don't ever Google yourself. You won't like what you'll find. It can mess with your mind. My best friend asked me one day, have you ever Googled yourself? Or do a search for your name? Just to see what information that might be out there about you. I know this might sound vain. I laughed and said, no, I never had a thought to. There's nothing that I need to know. Why? I asked my friend, have you Googled yourself? And if you did, what did you find? Yes, I did. I found my social media accounts in my old address. Just general information you would normally find online. No, crazy far out. Surprise. <laughs> you should one day look yourself up and see what information is out there about you. And if you don't find anything exciting, well, at least you looked. Yeah, maybe later. I have other things I need to do. And at the time, we left the conversation right there. How I wish I never thought about it again. But unfortunately, I did. A few weeks passed by, and one Friday night I found myself with nothing to do. So, I grabbed my laptop, brought up Google, and Googled myself. And what I found left me feeling anxious, confused, and scared. I saw an obituary, and on it was a picture of me. I was dumbfounded. How could this be? This is a mistake. I'm still alive, obviously. But the person in the picture was my identical twin. Or a doppelganger. It just didn't make any sense. But we had the same name, the same birthday. This had to be a one in a billion chance that this could happen. I need someone to explain. I need to do a deeper dive. I need to know how I died. I found an article about my tragic fate. I was run over by a car and dragged several feet, and the driver left me there bleeding out in the streets. My body started to shake. I instantly had a pounding headache. All of this is impossible. I fell to my knees and passed out on the floor. I came to a little after midnight, and my laptop was still open, illuminating bright. I went to my bathroom and splashed my face with some cold water trying to wrap my head around this horror. I went back to my laptop and looked at the information again. Then it hit me that this hasn't happened yet. The article was dated for the year 2024. This is going to happen next year. I was floored. This information is coming from the future? How is this possible? This is straight out of a sci-fi movie. This is truly paranormal. I'll take this as a sign and a warning to be as careful with everything I do. At least, I have time now to change my fate. Thanks to Google. <laughs> Hello, my friends. I'm back again. Your favorite paranormal 911 operator. That was a joke. I'm just playing. I hope you are all doing well and you are ready for my latest 911 tale. You all seem to be enjoying my horror stories, and I appreciate all your support. Keep it coming, and the stories will keep going. I have a real doozy of a story for you all today. So, get your drinks, popcorn, and snacks. This is really crazy. Buckle up for the ride. You have never heard a story like this before in your life. This story was truly creepy. It's out of the ordinary. If I wasn't a part of this call and heard what I heard, I wouldn't believe this was real. Not one word. I call this story... The Visitor. Nine one one. what's your emergency? Hello, my name is Louise. I live at 5633 Nottingham Street. Can you please send the police? My husband came and visited me. 
but now he won't leave. Does he have a weapon? Is he holding you hostage? No, I'm okay. But he just won't leave. He wants to stay here with me. Since he's your husband, does he live there with you? You said he is visiting. Did he move? To tell you the truth, this is a very complicated situation. Yes, he does live here, but he shouldn't be here now, and he seems confused. You see, he was in the hospital for a while due to a serious illness. But a few days ago, he showed up here, because he wanted to come home, where he felt comfortable. I was getting a weird feeling she wasn't telling me everything. I was picking up vibes that were strange. Suddenly, I could hear her husband start to cough violently. Okay, Louise. Is he well? It sounds like he is still sick. No, not really. Can you please just send someone to make him leave? I don't want him here anymore. I just want him to go. Then in the background, I heard a really loud... No! It was so loud it hurt my ear. I threw off my headphones. You can't make me go! This is my home! Suddenly, the phone hung up, and the couple was gone. I tried to call back the line, but I didn't get an answer. I dispatched the police and they were en route to their house, to make sure Luis was okay. When the police radioed me back, this is when everything really becomes crazy. The police reported when they entered Luis's home, she was knocked out. She was lying in a pool of blood on the floor. One of the police officers stayed to take care of Luis, while the other officer looked around the house cautiously. The officer was looking for her husband. He searched every room and he found him in bed. He was lying there cold to the touch. He was dead. The police officer said he could tell he had been dead for a while. The scene was very bizarre. They called for an ambulance to give aid to Luis and a coroner to take her husband's dead body away. Luis had a lot of questions to answer, once she was medically cleared and okay. Later that day, the police officer interviewed Luis, and this is the transcripted interview she gave. Hello, Luis. How are you feeling? Are you okay? Do you need anything? I have a bump on my head, but other than that, I'm fine. I'm doing all right. Good. I'm glad. Now we have some questions. We need to ask you about your dead husband. Yes, I knew you would. Go ahead. Okay. We spoke to the hospital and we found out that your husband was admitted there and that he was seriously ill. He was placed in the ICU for care. But while he was there, he took a turn for the worse and he didn't recover. He passed away. What we need to know is how did he end up in your home, dead, in your bed that same day? The hospital confirmed they took his body to the morgue. That's where he was placed. Yes, I know. They called me to inform me that he died. When they told me this, I didn't want to believe it. It didn't feel right. After the shock wore off, I grabbed my keys to leave. And I know this part is weird. But when I opened my front door, my husband was standing there. I was surprised to see him. Confused, but relieved. The hospital had to have made a mistake. Because he was standing in front of me. I was happy. But he didn't seem like himself. Something was off. Something was strange to me. He was cold when I touched him, and he wasn't talking. And when he did speak, he didn't say much. He just kept repeating he was glad to be home, and no one was going to make him leave. He wasn't ready to go. So I did what I could to make him comfortable. So, you're telling me he just materialized at your door. Your husband was pronounced dead, and he was last seen lying on a slab in the morgue in the hospital. Come on. You know this sounds impossible. Yes, I know, and I can't explain it. I've been trying my best to wrap my head around this situation, but I didn't question it at the time. I was full of trepidation. He was here in physical form. He wasn't a phantom or a ghost. But he wanted me to turn on the heater. 
He was very cold. So, I did what he asked. So, what did you do next? He went to our bedroom and lay down on the bed. He stayed there for the rest of the night. He started coughing violently. Believe me, that night I didn't get any sleep. And from what I could tell, neither did he. He had dark circles under his eyes, and his skin tone was very pale. I was so scared, it made me want to cry. I told him the next day I was going to take him back to the hospital. He still looked sick. His lips were turning blue. What did he say? What did he do? He became enraged. He told me no. This was his home and here is where he was going to stay. I know something was wrong. My husband has never spoken to me that way. He made me afraid. So I told him, okay. So, how long was he there with you? For three days. That's when I called 911. I wanted him to leave. That's what I told the 911 operator. I needed the police. Okay, Luis. When we found you, you were knocked out cold. You had your cell phone in your hand. You were in a pool of blood on the floor. What happened? From what I remember, he came in the room while I was on the phone with 911. He heard me telling the operator I wanted him to leave. But I didn't give the operator much details. I was afraid she wouldn't believe me. Suddenly, my husband yelled out, No! You can't make me go! This is my home! After that, I woke up on the floor. That's it. I can't tell you anything more. Where is my husband now? Like I told you, we found him lying in the bed. And I regret to tell you, he is dead. In the transcript, Luis started to cry, and that was the end of the transcript. The police eventually released Luis. They had no reason to hold her, so they let her go free. This is a true case of the weird, bizarre, and the unexplained. This will end my post for today. So, tell me what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Also, if you can, share my stories with your family and friends. Thank you for your support again, and thank you for listening. I was really sick one day with the flu. I felt really bad. I had body aches, pains, and it hurt for me to move. So, I decided to sleep on my couch since it was central to my kitchen and my bathroom. Plus, my couch was new. Well, it was new to me. I bought it from a thrift store. It was big, plush, and the cushions were soft. It felt good to my weary, sore, achy body. It was nice. Really comfortable. And it sat in front of my 60-inch flat-screen TV. The setup was perfect for me. When I lay down on the couch, it fit my body like a glove. It felt like an embrace. Just like a big, warm hug. I fell quickly into a deep sleep. And I had what I believe was a crazy fever dream. I had a dream that my couch tried to eat me. The couch had a mouth, sharp teeth, and a tongue. And I could feel the couch breathing in and out as if it had lungs. I woke up in a cold sweat. I was clammy and wet. I sat up and quickly took a look around. I was trying to get my bearings. I was trying to settle my nerves and to calm down. I went to use the bathroom and headed to my kitchen to get a drink of water. When I returned back to my couch, and this was the beginning of my horror. As soon as I found a comfy spot on my couch, I started to drift back to sleep. Suddenly, I started to feel movement underneath me. I could feel air on the back of my neck. Then I felt something rough, slimy, and wet. I also felt pressure in the middle of my back. I was so scared. I felt like I was going to have a heart attack. I could feel my covers starting to tingle around my feet and were being pulled. That's when I looked back and noticed a big gaping hole. It was in the middle of the couch. 
That's when I realized the couch had a mouth. This was no longer a dream. This was my waking reality. The couch tipped me upward, and the seat cushion started to tilt me back and down, directing me to the couch's open mouth. I grabbed the edge of the couch, trying to keep myself from sliding into its mouth. The couch was fighting me viciously, chomping and biting at me. When the couch realized it was losing the fight, the couch decided to take it to the next level. It didn't want to lose its bite. The couch started to shake hard and violently, like it was trying to get the last bit of crumbs from a chip bag, a snack pack. Then it stretched out its tongue to lasso my leg, guaranteeing it would get a good grip to pull me in. That's when I started to feel my strength give in due to the flu. I'm slipping and my grip is loose. I'm screwed. As the cow started to pull me down into its gaping maw, I close my eyes and wait to feel the pressure of the couch's jaw. Fortunately for me, the couch inhaled as I started sneezing. I sneezed straight into the monster's mouth. I also started coughing and wheezing. After all, I still had the flu. I was ill. This was the reason why I was sleeping on the couch in the first place. To be still, to heal. But this was a lucky break for me. It no longer wanted to eat me. It knocked me down to the floor. I was covered in slime and goo. My body felt cold like a corpse. It started to cough, sputter, and sneeze instantly. It sounded way worse than me. The flu germs invested the couch with the greatest of ease. The couch became so sick, it could no longer breathe. I watched as it gasped for air as it started to wheeze. And with its final breath, and death rattle. It was no more. It was deceased. I quickly got rid of that couch that very same day. I wanted it out of my house right away. I don't know if the couch was possessed or was some alien creature from another planet. One thing I do know is that this one time, I was happy to have the flu. Those invading germs saved my life. They are heroes. They really came through. I am a very demanding chef. I will only serve you perfection on a plate. Only the best. Even my plating is on point and impeccable. I want your dining experience to be exceptional. When it comes to fine dining, no other chef can compare to me. They can try, but they just can't compete. When you walk in my restaurant, it's like you died and stepped through heaven's door. My decor will take your breath away. Beauty is all you see from the ceiling to the floor. And my staff are well-trained, courteous, attentive, and professional. They can anticipate your wants and needs before you say a word. Yes, they are incredible. We treat every patron as they are a king or a queen. We treat you like royalty. Everything is always pristine, immaculate, and clean. Because superior service comes first. Now it's time for you to eat. I will create for you a tasty four-course meal. The best meal you ever ate in your life. My dishes will make you see the light. But you can't go. No, we are only getting started. You can't move on. Your faith has not been decided. We will start you off with a little appetizer. The most incredible gazpacho you will ever taste. It will fulfill all of your desires. For your second course, we will serve you the most delicious salad. It will bring you great joy. I promise you have never had a salad as good as our salad before. It will take whole of your soul. I promise you will want more. The presentation is so beautiful. The salad comes with walnuts, fresh strawberry, and a drizzle of a light vinaigrette. You will scream out, it is perfect. You will want more and more till you feel like you will explode. But you won't. Now it's time to feast your eyes on your third course, the main course, the real reason you've come here for. 
the meat and potatoes, of course. The meat is a juicy ribeye steak, medium rare, a buttery baked potato, and some perfectly seasoned grilled vegetables. It's a meal you would kill for. The steak is so tender, it will melt in your mouth. The potatoes is so fluffy and buttery, you wonder, how did you ever do without? I know you should be full, but you have one more. Your fourth course, it's dessert. And for dessert, we will serve you a sinful decadent chocolate devil food cake. It will be the best cake you ever ate. And with our perfect services and your to die for meal, this will conclude your perfect dining experience. More than a notion, the perfect deal. And of course, all this comes at the price. You know nothing is really free. Let's tally up your receipt. But we don't accept money here. We take other currency to pay your bill. We have a long list of customers that want the privilege to dine with us here at Chef's Kiss. Mwah. Because everything here is perfect. So, for us to put you on our list, we need to know what you are willing to give. It must be something meaningful to you. It has to be something you can't live without or don't want to lose. For example, your first child, or something your dead parent passed on to you, something that gives you happiness and makes you smile. It needs to be meaningful, something emotional. If you are ready to sign up to our waitlist for this amazing guaranteed dining experience and willing to give a piece of yourself, you will not regret it, because perfection is what we do best. I have been squatting here in the attic of a newly constructed home. I have been living here for a few months or so. I would come out to eat, to take a shower, watch TV. Only when the homeowner wasn't home. You see, a while back when they were constructing these new homes, we used to sneak in and stay overnight when construction was done for the day. And in the morning when construction started back up again, I would pack my stuff up and hide in the woods. But anyway. Now I know that I was wrong and I am in a predicament of my own making. Look. I got a bit cocky and came out of the attic when the owner was home. I was hungry and I don't know what I was thinking. The homeowner seems like a nice, average, normal guy. But looks are deceiving. I was way wrong. He was a monster. He really looks like he wouldn't hurt a fly. When I came out of the attic to spy on my roommate, I saw the homeowner wasn't alone. I thought, oh great, he's on a date. So I thought I would wait until they leave the house. I would ninja cat move freely about. Uh, what's a ninja cat you ask? It's a cat that was a ninja from a childhood cartoon. The cat moves like a ninja, deadly but silent, but he was still a cat that was nimble and quick. Ninja cat. Anyway, my plan was to wait them out in the second bedroom. The room was an office slash guest room where I could see the kitchen. It was a part of his upgrade package as addition. In this bedroom, there is a closet with a hatch that leads to his attic. This is where I reside. It's cozy. But that's just semantics. As you can tell, I ramble sometimes, but never mind. In my last quest, I forgot to grab some bread. I wanted to make a sandwich. How I forgot bread for a sandwich? I should have better planned. That's why I was going to ninja cat my way to the kitchen when they retired to the boudoir. That is when everything instantly changes and gets bizarre. The 
this is just a friendly reminder to please like and comment to let us know how we are doing so far. We would love to hear from you all. And if you're new, please subscribe and become a part of the PHS crew. And we thank you. Suddenly, I could hear the homeowner shouting. Him and his date started to get into an argument? What about? I couldn't tell you. I wasn't paying close attention. I wasn't the best listener when I was in school. That is why I was always in detention. Oh. I'm off track. That is when the homeowner attacked. He grabbed his date and he put her in a chokehold. He just held her there for a while. Till she went limp and he let her body go and it hit the floor. He started to pace back and forth saying, Look at what you made me do! I think he must have broken her neck. Her lips immediately started to turn a dark shade of blue. And her eyes were bloodshot red. I could see all of this because of the direction of her head. She was looking at me with her lifeless eyes. Looking at me like, How could you just watch me die? I was mortified. So, the homeowner dragged her body into his bedroom. I could hear water running, so I assume he took her to his bathroom? He rushed out to his garage and came back with a chainsaw. I was in disbelief. I felt like I was in a horror movie. So suspenseful. I couldn't close my jaw. He went back to his room and started the chainsaw up. And after that, my memory gets hazy. I think I passed out for a moment. I couldn't bear the thought of him chopping up that poor lady. And I came back to reality. I realized I was a witness to murder. I hurriedly climbed up the attic like a ninja cat. And I started gathering my things and throwing what I could into my backpack. I wanted out of this house of horrors. I needed to get gone, scram, make like a ghost and poof, disappear. Like there was no tomorrow. But when I tried to open the hatch, it wouldn't open. It was latched. And on top of that, I could smell gasoline. The homeowner set the house on fire to burn every bit of evidence. That includes me! Now I'm trapped here in this attic. The smoke is filling up this space. I should have left sooner like I planned. This was my total mistake. Because the homeowner knew I was here, and I knew I had to get out. On my last outing, I saw the homeowner had surveillance cameras that was installed as a part of his upgrade inside of his house. <sighs> I keep waking up with a headache in the middle of the night. I also wake up sometimes from my naps with a migraine. It leaves me feeling tired, hazy, and my eyes are very sensitive to lights. These episodes just started when I moved into my new home. It's just me and my daughter living here. We've been here about two months. It hasn't been very long. The house has three bedrooms and two baths, a quaint little home, and I have made it my own. But these headaches started when I moved into the house. It's really strange. They come almost every night, and this has never happened to me before. And it's starting to become worse as time goes on. I'm normally a healthy young woman. I take care of myself. I exercise and I try to eat right. And I go to bed by 10 p.m. almost every night. My daughter is five years old. She is very smart, creative, and she loves to draw. She's always drawing things that she sees, like cats, dogs, her goldfish in its fishbowl, friends, family, and me. She loves to draw anything and everything. I love her dearly. She means the world to me. But lately, her drawings have become dark and weird. Some of the pictures she has drawn has made me a bit weary and scared. One day, she drew me a picture that left me 
disturbed, and alarmed. It was a picture of me asleep on the couch, and looming over me was a big, dark shadow. It had tentacles for arms, and one of the tentacles was attached to the top of my head. It looked like it was sucking something out of me. But what? I couldn't say. I asked my daughter, why did she draw that picture of that thing, and what was it doing to me? What she told me had me horrified and afraid. She told me, Mommy, I drew what I had seen. While you were asleep, it creeped out from behind the couch. It looked at me, and it hushed me by putting a tentacle up to its mouth. Then it looked at you and brushed away your hair. It laid its tentacle on top of your head. It began to smile a big, wide, toothy, evil-looking grin. Suddenly, it burped really loud. Then it took its tentacles off your head. It moved into the dark and disappeared. Mommy, I'm scared. I didn't know what to think or say, and I started to feel pain in my head. I didn't want to believe her. She had to be making this up. This had to be her childish imagination. Because if this is true, it's really effed up. I just bought this house. I can't afford to move again. I'm stuck. What the hell do I do? I'm feeling drained and my headache gets back again. This just can't be true. I had to sit down for a moment because the room started to spin. I told my daughter that we were going to pack some things and spend a few days with my best friend. I just need time to clear my head and get my energy back up so I could feel like myself again. And I did. So, when I felt better, I did some research to see what type of entity that was attached to my house, and how I could get rid of it, and how I could get it out. I found out it was an energy vampire, and it likes to drain you of all your energy, leaving you listless, hazy, and tired. It was a parasite that seems to have attached itself to me. It was using me to feed its needs. It will use you till it can't anymore. And when it's done, it will move to another house that's close. I thought to myself, it's going to attach itself to my daughter. I knew right there I wasn't going to let that happen. The research I found advised to sage my home, say a prayer out loud, and bring in a priest to also bless your home. And if you follow this, in a few days, the entity's energy will dissipate. The activity will eventually go away. I was willing to try anything. So, I left my daughter with my mother and headed back to my house, ready for war. I wanted this damned entity gone. It needed to go back to hell where it belonged. When I entered my home, it was really cold and dark. It felt menacing and completely off. It just didn't feel right, but I wasn't going down without a fight. I could see Shadow moving in the dark. I could feel that I was being stalked. I was scared, but I didn't want to show any fear. I spoke out loud with authority and told the entity, You need to leave. I will not let you steal any more of my energy. I started to sage every corner of my home as I prayed out loud, telling this thing to go. But the entity was a formidable foe. It was very strong. It tried everything to hang on. And when it was cornered and on its last leg, it spoke to me. It begged and pleaded to be spared. But I didn't care. It had to leave. It couldn't stay here. I felt it when it left. My home now felt bright, light, and airy like a weight was lifted off my chest. Once it was gone, I had no more headaches. With the entity, it all went away. I invited a priest to come and bless my home, to make sure all the bad energy was gone. Now my home feels like it's completely mine. It feels warm and inviting the way it should, and over time, everything felt normal. Everything was fine. Now my daughter only draws happy, friendly pictures again. No more dark, scary pictures. Only sweet, loving pictures of our pets, family, and friends. A 
I'm on trial for a crime I didn't commit. I swear it was an accident. I know what you're thinking. Yeah, that's what they all say. But I didn't kill him. I was there just to watch the game. Everything I'm about to tell you is the truth. And in the end, you will see it was an accident. I'm innocent. You will have no choice but to conclude. I just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. This is my only true crime. I'm being accused of murdering my best friend. He was my bro. We were tight. I would never do anything to hurt him. I was chilling at his house that day. He invited me to come over and watch a game. We were eating chips and drinking beer. Just me and my bro having a good time hanging out. But if I knew he would end up dead and I would have been accused of killing him, I would have never left my house. A commercial came on the TV and by now I had to pee. When I came back to the living room, my bro had a knife in his hand. He was cutting up cheese. When he was done, he laid the knife down on the edge of the table. But I noticed this table wasn't stable. When our team scored a touchdown, we cheered, yelled, and screamed. We high-fived because our team was in the lead. The next touchdown excited my bro. He jumped up again. But this time, he hit the table, and a knife went flying in the air. And when it came down, it struck him right on the top of his head. It happened so suddenly, all I saw was him bleeding profusely. He was still conscious at the time. He wanted me to pull the knife out. But little did I know, this would make the situation worse. I did what he asked. He was in so much pain as I pulled, he started to shout. There was blood everywhere. It was a real bloodbath. My bro lost a lot of blood. I knew he wasn't going to last. Suddenly, I heard the door open. And it was my bro's next door neighbor. She took a look around at the scene. She saw me standing over my dead friend with a knife in my hand and she started to scream. I told her, no, it's not what you think, as I moved towards her. She screamed out, murderer, now he is trying to attack me. She quickly turned and ran out of the house as she screamed out, call the police. All these events happened so fast. I didn't have time to process them. The outcome didn't look good for me. As my bro lay on the floor dead. Then I hear the police yell out, freeze. They took me down quickly and placed handcuffs onto me. I could hear the neighbor telling the police she came over because she heard us yelling, fighting, and my bro yelling for help. And she saw me stab him, herself. She made herself an eyewitness to the crime. But this was a total lie. I swear I'm telling you the truth. I'm completely innocent. I didn't do what they were trying to accuse. Well, this is quite a story. You know they have the knife with your fingerprints on it. It's going to be hard to combat that because it's solid proof. And we only have your word about how your friend died and the neighbor said she was there. She is the only person who can dispute. But as your defense attorney, I will do everything in my power to defend you. We will go in and present to the jury an accidental killer defense. If one juror is convinced, then we can force a mistrial and you can walk away a free man. That is, until they try to prosecute you once again. Do you have a hard time falling asleep? Do you find yourself wide awake late in the night counting sheep? Then we have the pill for you. If you're interested, then stay tuned. From the creators of the energy drink Everlast, when you need a pick-me-up fast, we also created a sleeping pill that can help you fall into a natural deep sleep to relax you and help you to chill. Introducing Sleep Tight, a sleeping pill to help you sleep through the night. One pill will knock you out cold. You can stay asleep for eight hours or more. You will wake up refreshed and filled with energy. 
so you can be the best you can be. Imagine what you can do the next day if you can sleep restfully through the night. You will wake up ready to take on the world. You can take on any fight. We guarantee you will never have insomnia again, my friend. All of your sleeping issues will completely end. You'll sleep like a baby on a cloud. You'll drift off to slumberland as soon as your head goes down. You can't buy sleep type just yet in the stores, but any day now, the FDA should approve our patented formula. That way, we won't be sued and end up in court. So, we are running test trials, and we need 20 people to sign up and we ship out Sleep Tight to you completely free. Even the shipping won't cost you anything. Now, that's an offer that can't be beat. So, what do you say? Yes? Great! Now, like any medication, there are risks and side effects. Simon says, the first command is to cut off a finger on your left hand. This is just a friendly reminder to please like and comment to let us know how we are doing so far. We would love to hear from you all. And if you're new, please subscribe and become a part of the PHS crew. And we thank you. the correct box then by law we have to tell you this the rules of the FDA and you should know what to expect you may experience death dizziness nausea headaches depression diarrhea sleepwalking sleep talking murder intent death agitation anxiety baldness a lack of appetite insomnia chest pain migraines and death <sighs> That was a lot to say. I nearly ran out of breath. Oh. Um. Yes. I did say murderous intent. But it's a small chance. Maybe about 50%. Uh huh? I yes, I did say insomnia. In some people, we found that sleep type pills had the opposite effect. It keeps them up instead of putting them to sleep. We didn't foresee that. Uh, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. Don't go. You changed your mind? Your answer is no? Wait, what, 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 wait, what if we give you 5,000 to be a part of our study? You have nothing to lose and everything to gain, and who doesn't like money? Okay, now go to our website and download your application. Make sure you fill out the liability waiver, and we will ship sleep tight to you overnight to your door. What more could you ask for? We promise you will sleep tight all through the night as soon as your body hits the bed. You will sleep like you're dead. Sleep Tide is an experimental drug. We are not responsible if you have hallucinations while taking this medication or if you fall into a coma and never wake up. We told you we are not FDA approved. So yeah, you signed the liability waiver. I guess that's just your luck. There was a weather report of a thunderstorm cell in my area. The skies were dark gray and looked menacing. But if only I knew what was coming, then I could have prepared myself for the mass hysteria. The sky opened up with light raindrops. The rain hit the ground with big wet plops. In the distance, I could hear thunder coming closer. I was feeling restless and a little stir crazy with nothing to do. Being cooped inside, I was losing my composure. But then I noticed there was a different smell in the air. 
Unlike the other times when it rains, the smell was metallic. It was rare. Suddenly, the skies turned a deep, dark red. It looked like the end of the world. So violent. It filled me with dread. Then the rain changed. It was all really strange. And in that moment, that's when everything went insane. The rain that hit my window was now blood red as it dripped onto the ground below. I thought to myself, what the hell is going on? It looked like a massacre took place as the blood rain started to cover everything. The people that were caught in the blood rain were colored completely red. The blood rain covered them from their feet to their heads. People were running for shelter, slipping and sliding. People were in their cars, had to stop driving. So many people in the streets looked so afraid. Like Jesus returned and this was judgment day. And the worst part of it all, it started to hail as the blood rain continued to fall. It was raining so hard, you couldn't see through it as it was growing darker. It was a real bloodbath. My mind couldn't comprehend. I just didn't get it. I just didn't understand. Where was the strange rain coming from? This was so unbelievable. I was at a loss for words, I was stunned. There was a river of blood running down my street. It was a weird and strange sight to see. Luckily for me, that day I had no place to be. So I was safe in my home watching the breaking news about the blood rain event on my TV. After an hour, the blood rain started to subside. I could see my neighbors all leaving their house to go outside. I followed suit too and stepped out onto my porch, just a couple of feet away from my door. The sky was blue again, like the whole ordeal never happened. Finally, the blood started to dry up on the ground, but now everything was stained red all around. We all found out from the news that this only happened here to our small town. No other place around the world had rain made of blood. And once word got out about this bizarre event, our small town was overrun with scientists, news reports, and the military. They all flooded in, that we never found out what happened. Well, at least nothing that they wanted us to know. Until this day, the government has sealed the record about the blood rain event. It's labeled, top secret, case closed.